This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. Architectural Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. Uh, our architect on the line with me. Yes, so we can make sure we get all the proper matching parts for our door and we can get them ordered from you. Absolutely. Um, if I so, recall, uh, you had an overhead concealed closer that was center hung. And what were you wanting to do? Put an automatic door bottom? Yeah, we want to put an automatic door bottom because I don't want a threshold. We have a tile uh, that uh, basically goes from outside to inside at the threshold, or, you know, for the slab. And, um, and I, don't want to, I don't want to interrupt that visually, so good automatic door bottom for that. And you also had, you, you mentioned that you had some suggestions for, uh, you know, hidden door closer. We also, the other reason for the door closer is to have enough pressure on the door because I'd, I'm not having a normal latch because I've, I've, I've put in a, we're using Control 4, and I've worked with Control 4 before, um, and we're using a 2N uh, system for the, uh, the front door, uh, both video and communication, and then also the mechanism to, to control some kind of a latch. What we've selected so far was a magnetic bolt um, for both. The, there's a gate, and then once you get in the gate, you have the, the enclosed walkway. We were going to mimic that and do the same thing at the door, but in order to make all that work and seal tightly, we wanted enough pressure with the, with the door closer. So, so that's the current plan, but this is obviously your area of expertise if you have a better idea, we still can do that better idea. <laughs> what, um, the electric bolt, is that fail safe or fail secure? Uh, the one that we selected is fail secure. All right, how will you get out in, uh, in the event of a power outage? So there there's, there's two, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, uh, there, there are two things. Uh, the first is we have a battery backup in the house as, as a fail, fail point number one. Fail point number two is this unit does have uh, the ability to, uh, from the inside, you can, um, depending on how you mount it, there is a way to, to move it uh, manually so you can open it. Oh, okay. So the I think the problem was when we spoke was basically fitting a mortise automatic door bottom into the bottom rail of a door that's got mm -hmm. a big you know, center hung bottom pivot arm mortise to the bottom of it. So I think it's just a conflict of space. Right. So, so, we would uh, need, so we would need to pick one that is a left hung, right? Richard? Um, you mean the closer? Uh, the closer, yes. E, well, I mean, you'd have to either change that from center hung to offset hung okay. or you could change the overhead closer to um, a different model that you can then use sauce or a concealed hinge or you can use an, a surface mounted automatic door bottom or uh, semi mortise it so that it's flush to the face of the door because I think that if I recall that door was was thicker than average so you might yeah. have room to fit all that in there if you semi mortise it. Yeah, the the size of the door right now is uh, I have the frame. The actual door is ninety five and a half by four, about forty two. Um, it's a single style, true style, but just our basic series with a glass insert, and it's a uh, two and a quarter inches thick to to maximize the size. Yeah. D depending on how big that bottom arm is, you could take a surface mount model and simply semi mortise it so that it's at least flush to the face of the door. You ought to be able to fit all that in there. Okay. So basically, we just need to have the closer, the selected closer, be an offset hung, not a center hung. I don't think that you have to change it. Just use an automatic door bottom that you semi mortise. Okay. An automatic, yeah. And with that Pemco, where we were looking at a Pemco. The STK PKL. Um, the other issue that we have with the door bottom, well, it's not an issue, but 
basically the tile that we've selected is is very grainy. Um, it's meant for uh, we just want to make sure it's not slip resistant uh, or it's slip resistant. So there is going to be some kind of um, texture to the tile. And so what is that a good solution for it? That uh, they were saying that for uneven surfaces for the Penco that that um, PK material that they have at the door bottom closer, that would work. Uh, I don't know about that. It, it would depend on how grainy, you know, like a, a severely pitted piece of, uh, you know, concrete sill mm -hmm. that a door would sit on. Generally, I would suggest a bristle uh, for that um, just mm -hmm. because it'll kind of fill in a lot better than, you know, if, if you're change in, in height of the floor is extremely, extremely small. It won't matter. But I would be more concerned about the difference in height between the tile and the grout line, because that's where you'll see a hundred yeah. thousandth of an inch. And I don't know that Pemco I don't know that Pemco preen is gonna you know, you're gonna smash it down so far to fill all of that. It'll probably mm -hmm. work. But okay. you know, whether so stripping that exterior good. center hung door is a is a problem on all four sides, not not just the bottom. Yeah, because we have two grout lines cutting through there, so, you know, per, uh, perpendicular to the door. So that would be the one that um, seems like it, it would be an issue. But um, so you think either the bristle brush or the Pemco cream, if the grout line is small enough, we could probably get, get it to close, but it would be an, it could be an issue. Yeah, it could be. Um, if it's fairly fairly flush, I think, or flat, you know, in elevation, you'll be you'll be fine. But if it's not, then consider bristle. Like, you know, you'll have residential applications where they still have carpets. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, a bristle would be used, or that heavily pitted concrete sill is where I'd suggest a bristle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This one is a porcelain tile. It's not really like pitted. It's more the texture has a rough texture to it. So. Uh, think of almost like a not popcorn ceiling, but you know, just a really, really mi like very, very almost like a millimeter of popcorn ceiling, and it's just yeah. kind of it's like, like more like a, like, so a it's just almost like a yeah, like a sandpaper, like a sandpaper finish kind of. Yeah, I would. I think the Penco print would would handle that easily. Okay, got it. Okay, great. so so the question I had was um, Richard also was was in. in some of the videos I watched, you, you know, you kind of reviewed a whole series of different uh, brands, you know, from zero to um, whatever. And, and I remember the one in particular, there was a model that had interior bumpers up, if you will, on the, uh, on the, the, the arm that comes down to seal to help try to make it quieter. Is that really an issue with Pemco versus any of the others? It depends on, on the person. Um, if I've sold 10,000 of these, I've had two people that it has been a fatal flaw in the design and they refused to use it because because you could hear the drop bar coming back up into the housing when the doors open. Um, for me, it wouldn't be an issue, but it does give off sound. Um, the problem with the zero items is that they're going to be substantially thicker than Temco, so we'd have to see the template of that bottom arm on your 700 Rixon closer, if I recall, that's what it was, um, to make sure it's all going to fit down there because you're going to need true style to prep that for everything. Um, don't don't ship it to the job site not prepped. Right. Yeah. Um, and actually, go, going back to the question of, of partially mortise or not, so we're, this is a, it's not being painted, this is a, it's a mahogany with a, you know, clear, clear coat on it. So, and I don't want to see the mechanism. So whatever we pick cash, we've got to, we've got to go full mortise on it. Yep, that makes sense. It's not going to work. You're not. You're going to have to change the the method of hanging the door to the to the soft hinges. Well, that would be an option with a with a concealed closer. Um, mm -hmm. But there's there's the door's just not thick enough to fit it all down there. Got it. So that that's the issue, Jack. Is basically um, at the bottom of the door for the pivot. Um, I think I understand. The pivot at the bottom that the door needs that it sits on, um, that will interfere because they're mortising it into the center of the door. That right. will interfere with where the mortise, the mortise uh, Penco sweep would be. So they would go well, hit each other, so you wouldn't have a seal at the mortise. 
So if we use the sauce hinge there, or a, a, and they have a closer that's in part of their, because they have garage entry closers, if they, if they use the sauce hinge with a closer built into the hinge, that should work. Are those strong enough, Richard, to close yeah, the would, door? Yeah, you're talking about the 220 ICs or the 218s. They'll, they'll close the door, but they are an extremely inelegant way to do so because it's just compressing a spring and there's mm-hmm. no hydraulic um, uh, component to it to arrest mm-hmm. how quickly that spring is going to let go. So I would, I, you know, I, for self-closing, I wouldn't suggest sauce. I would use an overhead concealed closer that can be hung, that can be used compatibly with a door that's on sauce hinges. So that can be used overhead, so an overhead closer that is compatible with sauce hinges. Do you have a yeah. recommendation specifically, Richard? Oh, yeah. LCN's a good, uh, well, uh, let's see here now. Uh, you were talking Rickson. Um, Rickson yeah, would be yeah. yeah. And one of the things we'd like is, is that, that that closer has a mechanism so that when you fold it 90 degrees open or whatever, that you can all stay open until you kind of, you know, give it that nudge past its uh, stop point. Yeah, hold open, sure. Um, so I'll, I'm, I'm loading the LCN catalog, but there will be a concealed closer in there where you can get you can get that all installed. Um, you know, I, I believe the 30 the 3100 series is the one that will do it. The other issue, though, before I, I forget, is you're going to need to have a custom strike plate manufactured for the jam so that when the drop bar mechanism that's sticking out of the edge of the automatic door bottom makes contact with the jam, it's not going to score and scratch and gouge the, the, the jam itself. Yeah, um, right. Hey, what, so the- what was that, Richard? Um, I mean... Strike plate on the jam uh, because the oh sorry I'm not sure I understand what that issue is. Yeah, so the actuating uh, bolt that's sticking out of the end of the automatic door bottom that forces mm-hmm. the drop bar to drop when it's pushed in and closing mm-hmm. the door pushes that in. Well, that's because of the center hung nature of the opening. It's going to make an unusual uh, path of contact with the bottom of the jam. So you'll need a piece of metal on there because it's it's moving through an arc touching the frame rather than a um, a door that's hung on hinges, let's say, that makes a, the bolt makes a different approach to the jam itself, where it's almost straight on. So you'll yep. you'll need a you'll need a, a custom piece of architectural metal on on the bottom of the frame. And would you put that on the hinge side or the latch side? Well, the, well, wait, um, I, I, hold on. I, I thought we just decided generally, that we were going to go yeah, with... you'll see it on the hinge side. Um, although you might be able to flip that around and put out, put it on the on the latch or the bolt side of the door as well. Well, so I thought we just decided we were going to go with uh, a, a closer that's compatible with saw hinges. So then the it's, it, then it should work like any standard door. Um. If that if you're going to a a door that's considered offset hung, then yeah, you won't have to worry about that. If you're going to hang in there with with center hung, then we've got to change. We've got to have a strike plate for it. Um, right. But if so, but it's not, yeah, it sounds like since we want to go full mortise, and we got to go with uh, um, uh, the concealed hinges. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Concealed hinges. <clears throat> Yeah, the LCN 2000 series would be a good one to go with. Um, you'll you'll absolutely need to run all of this by your door and frame manufacturer because they're all not the same. Some of them may balk at doing this sort of prep work. So we would use a, uh, the LCN 2000 series with the Rickson 3100 series. No, 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 no. Uh, so there won't be a Rickson closer. Rickson doesn't make a closer um, like what you'll need. So okay. it would either be an, an LCN 2010 or an LCN 2030, either of those. And that's uh, L as in Larry, Charlie, uh, Matt? November. November. 
And so that was LCM uh, 2030 and LCN 2010. Yeah, absolutely. So. Those those are fully concealed. Very that 2030 is extremely typical for us to sell. A lot of high end retail uses it because they get they don't see it. Yep. And then this would go with the sauce hinges with closers. Yeah, it can be templated. There's one more that I'll, I'd like to mention to you. The 3130 by LCN uh, will work for that as well. Okay. It uh, all so has to be ordered. Um, the, uh, the closer has to be ordered templated for its hanging device. So we have to tell the factory how we're hanging the door so that they can create the template. Um, based on that, on the weird, on the modified vertical axis of pivoting. So it has to be detailed in the hardware set at the time. Okay. Got it. Cash, I want to say, I, I, I don't think, with this closer, we don't need anything other than appropriately sized sauce hinges, not special closer sauce hinges. Okay, got it. Yeah, don't, sure. yeah, don't use those. That's, they're neat in concept, but your door is going to slam. Okay, got it. Perfect. Great. But but everything we've talked about fundamentally changes your frame as well. So you're not using a cased opening frame anymore. You use a typical rabbited, single rabbit or, or you know, typical double rabbited frame, probably single rabbit in the exterior. And it also solves the problem of how to more elegantly feel the other three sides of the opening as well. You can use curved in style weather stripping. But I would talk, yeah. True Style is obviously going to make the frame as well. Mm -hmm. And they would just okay. take it off. Yeah, right now they're making the frame as well. Yeah, okay, so that's great. So you're going to definitely need to get a hardware set in front of them and say, mm -hmm. here's because of the requirement of a concealed, of a mortised automatic door bottom and all other mm -hmm. hardware being almost completely concealed, we got to make sure you guys can, A, mortise for this stuff, but, you know, give me, it's going to change everything that they're doing. The frame is now inherently different. Got it. Okay, got it. And then if um, if we do this, then what would be the specification for the, the closer? I mean, not the closer, the uh, automatic door sweep. Would it be the Pemco is, is fine? And then Jack would just need to select whether it's the Pemco cream or the bristle brush? Well, at that point, I would definitely, I would, if I, if it was me in my house, I would use zero because um, you're going you completely mortised. It, it is a much larger piece of steel, um, and the model number that I would consider would be 360 AA, alpha, alpha. Alpha, alpha, great. Is that the one that has the, uh, the interior bumpers to reduce the noise? Absolutely. Got it. Cool. Um, so, Cash, it seems like we ought to have a, a chat with True Style, some one of their specialists or something, just to make sure that we, you know mm -hmm. we're good with all of this. Yeah. What I'm going to do, uh, Jack, is I will assemble all of these um, specifications, and then I will ask. Um, Elmo to set up a call between us and um, TrueStyle, and then we can go through it all together to how it all goes together. Okay, yeah, and instead of going through whoever their vendor is, whoever the distributor is, I think we should go right to the source of TrueStyle. Uh, you know, uh, if, if in fact we're not buying directly from them, only because that telephone game ends up taking weeks, and, and let's just go to the manufacturer who knows what, what, what the answer is. Okay, great. Um, the only thing, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you about that, Jack, because um, that may create issues of its own, but I will check with Elmo and make sure that that will be, because they're the ones who will eventually check it, and I don't know how the factory will have that information. So, yeah, I think it's a great idea to make sure that the factory knows what's coming, but that may need to still be done through the vendor. So I, I'll check it. I'll make sure, and I'll let you okay. know. Okay. You and I can talk. Let's talk yeah. after we get, let, let Richard yeah. go. Is there anything else, Richard, that we, we need to uh, be thinking about, or do we cover everything? Uh, I think you're in good shape. Uh, my email is under contact us in the upper right-hand corner of my site. Drop me an email, and I'll send you back a hardware set, um, and and you'll then be able to go to I, – I, I'm in agreement. It's okay to call TrueStyle and ask for tech support and just say, we're working with your distributor such and such. 
but we really want to be a hot knife through butter on this. And that's they're okay. cool with that. You're not trying to cut okay. anybody's oh. throat. Oh. That would be my Great. recommendation Great. as well. Great. That, then yeah, then I think that's totally fine with it. Great. Yeah. Hi, right, thanks for the call. Uh, so, uh, Richard, uh, yes. should I send you, uh, if I, is the best way to send it through the contact? Because I just wanted to send you this information that we took down today. Yes. Um, I'll write you an email and just follow up, and then you can email us back. Hmm. Is that okay? It's very much okay, yes, sir. Okay, awesome. Okay, Thank very you. good. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, Richard. So I really appreciate it. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.